Good morning, and welcome to Fujian province. That's right, I'm no longer in the uh, farm fields in uh, rural China. I'm in uh, the heart of where most of Chinese people working in America come from, Fujian province. <laughs> but not to worry, soon I'll be back with my son again, just out here for a little bit looking into an opportunity. It's pretty nice here, it's very uh, different from where I've been pretty in a different way. I know the fields are very green right now and it looks very pretty, but uh, this place is very mountainous and green. More to my liking, actually. Although, oh, I have to admit that Anhui province does have a lot of pretty places, but Fujian is a big surprise to me, having not really been out here very much in the past. But not to worry, soon I will be back with my son. I'm only out here temporarily looking into an opportunity. So again, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going back. You know, it's interesting uh, when I started on my journey out here, it was basically like what I expected it would be. Empty train station, not many people uh, riding anywhere, had plenty of space, was able to sit down, get on the computer, play around a little bit before uh, train I actually got there way too early but <laughs> that's beside the fact most train stations in China have Wi-Fi so you can get on and get some things done or play games like in my case yeah very empty of course that station isn't usually very busy anyway but I uh, got to Nanjing which is a very large station and as you can see there weren't that many people compared to normal. Usually, even for the size of the station, it would be packed full of people. Of course, when it came time to get on the train, everybody showed up. <laughs> there was plenty of people. They always rush to get on the train. It's always quite a commotion. I prefer train travel, by the way. Anytime you get on a plane, by the time you get to your destination, no matter how short the flight is, at least in my case, I always feel miserable and dried out. So. I always prefer to take the train, even if it takes longer. Fujian province is a very green place. It's actually just right across the way from Taiwan, so if you've ever been there, you can kind of have an idea of what it's like, sort of. We're separated by a good amount of, ugh, excuse me, my tongue, by a good amount of water, but um, similar climate. It's very nice here. I, uh, I like to see the mountains and some of the tropical plants. It's good to see some palm trees again. Even if they are like the ghetto palm trees in Los Angeles, anyone who's lived out there will know what I'm talking about. I'm sure it's not all like that here. Those ones just remind me of uh, some of the uh, palm trees lining the roads that I used to see in Long Beach or somewhere like that. I did mention the uh, the trains are slower than taking a plane, but they do move pretty fast. The high-speed rail here in China can go over 300 kilometers an hour. So when they do reach their uh, top speeds or cruising speeds or whatever you want to call it, you can see things rushing past pretty quick outside the window. You do get to see a lot of pretty scenery as it goes along. My uh, train ride was actually eight hours to get here. It's really long. Um, but luckily on the train, there's no turbulence or anything. So it's not like you have to stay in your seat You can get up and walk around if you want you can do all kinds of things. They've got Wi-Fi on the train so You can uh, get your laptop. Well, sometimes they usually have Wi-Fi. I should say that They have power outlets so you can get work done or watch movies, whatever it is you want to do Really nice, especially if you get the uh, business class or first class ticket you get a really nice seat that lifts up. It's almost like you're floating. Kind of like on the plane. Yeah, riding the train in China is always a lot of fun. It's kind of crazy when people line up for those uh, to get on the train. It's always this big rush. You know, I've never understood it. Everybody has, you know, a ticket that's got a seat. It's not like, you know, it's first come, first serve. But they rush on just as if, you know, they don't hurry and get on that train, then they're not going to have their seat. Someone's going to take it. But uh, 
if you ever do travel to China, just keep that in mind. You don't have to rush. The people will start lining up about 30 minutes before the train boards. You can just stand off to the side. There's no reason to rush and stand in that line. You can have the seats when they get up. No rush, your seat's not going anywhere. They also tend to rush the escalators. You find there's always some steps you can take. But there's almost always an escalator going down, which is nice if you have bags, but it can be difficult to get on. Lines in China don't actually work very well. So you've got to kind of fight for your spot on that escalator. Push your bags in, people will take your spot. <laughs> You'd be surprised the spaces people will try to fit into. But um, yeah, escalator goes down, everybody's rushing this way and that. Got to check your ticket, make sure you're getting in the right car. Otherwise, you'll have to walk through the train, which can be a real pain because there'll be uh, ladies with carts trying to sell drinks and such. That can be a hassle if you have a big bag. So make sure you go to the right car. Usually it'll say on the sign which way to go because it can switch on you. You don't know which side is the front and the back. Just look on the sign, no big deal. Yeah, a nice ride. And you don't feel dried out and miserable by the time you get where you're going. It's also a lot of space. It's not like on the plane, you know, where you're really crammed in if you're in uh, economy. Lots of space, seats lean back a long way. It doesn't mess with your, uh, your tray table. If you do happen to lean your seat back, it's not gonna mess up anything for the person behind you because again, they've got plenty of space. Pretty nice. So as I was saying before, if you encounter a Chinese person at a restaurant, you're in America or somewhere else, nine times out of 10, at least in the United States, they're probably from here, from Fujian province. I'm surprised that more Americans don't know about this place as a result of that. Uh, you might ask the people at the Chinese restaurant where they're from, they'll tell you like Shanghai or something. It's like the United States, you know, they'll pick some place you're familiar with, but nine times out of 10, they're probably from Fujian province. <laughs> don't go asking them if they directly, if they're from Fuzhou or something, but Fuzhou is the capital of the province, by the way. But, uh, yeah, they're probably from here. It's a really pretty place, by the way. Lots of mountains, lots of green. I think I mentioned that already. It's, um, as I also mentioned, just across the way from Taiwan, which, uh, depending on which <laughs> political side you're on, it could be uh, the other China, the Republic of China, or you could consider it a breakaway province or however it is that they look at it these days i don't know i don't really keep up on that but nice place my wife has family there so i was looking for a noodle shop to get something to eat it's about lunchtime now but i'm not finding anything so i'm just going to go into one of these convenience stores and grab some instant noodles <laughs> ate that at my hotel room until i'm a little bit more familiar with what is in the area. Hmm, which one to get? So many choices. Steak noodles? Hmm. What's this? No idea. Hmm. I'm gonna go with that one. Got some water. Oh, I found me. Oh, do I scan here? Yes. Oh, there we go. Zaijian. Zaijian.
Ah, what a feast we have here. Braised beef noodles. I can point out, I guess this says it's braised in soy sauce, something to that effect. This is the symbol for beef, nyo. This is meat, so nyo, nuro, which is beef meat. And this is the one you want to look for if you want to find a noodle shop, by the way. Mian, noodles. My horrible Chinese skills, but yes, braised beef noodle soup. The instant kind. Open this thing up. Actually, I already opened it up. <laughs> you can see you've got all these different sauces and vegetable type things and whatever. I guess, uh, yeah, there's your vegetables and uh, beef and egg things. I don't know. Comes with a little fork. How convenient, right? Pour all the stuff in and then the hot water and then you have soup. Mmm. Fill it up to the line. You can use the fork to kind of weigh it down. Oh, fork isn't strong enough. One for the can. <laughs> ah, that'll work. All right, so while I'm sitting here waiting for these noodles to soften up, I guess I can address some of the things that we talked about in uh, the last video about war and that sort of thing. Now, I know there's a lot of reasons why China would not go to war, and a sensible person would think, well, China would never do anything to provoke a war. That wouldn't make sense. It'd be bad for China, it'd be bad for America, it'd just be bad for everybody. Well, I don't know. I feel like um, if they feel backed up against the wall, like they know their regime is going to crumble, or they're going to lose their opportunity, like now they have the ability to, for example, take Taiwan, which would be ridiculous to do because it would result in their destruction but uh let's say they think well we're gone anyway so they might just do it you never know i don't think they will i i don't think that there's really going to be a war um the other problem you have is what if and i know that the chinese military sometimes has very aggressive people they're very proud of their country and so sometimes when they come against or come i shouldn't say come against come across let's say uh a u.s surveillance plane somewhere out there and one of their fighter jets might get too close and because of their aggressive behavior they might collide with it and there could be an incident like that especially with such high tensions anything could set it off now i don't think that's going to happen i i really don't so i just want to say don't worry too much <laughs> i mean Let's let's hope not. Of course, you know, this virus thing, I never could have imagined that happening. And well, it, it happened, as I said in the last video. It seems that these days, the things that just happen in fantasy land seem to happen in real life. So I guess who knows? Uh, an outbreak like a movie happens. Maybe a war like a movie could happen. I just I just don't know. I don't think it will, though. So don't worry too much. Ah, I believe these are ready to be eaten. Now, just to give them a try, I'm afraid they might be uh, a little hot, but well, we'll give it a try anyway. See how these things taste. <laughs> Blowing them. <laughs> yep, I'm right, they're hot. But uh, the taste isn't so bad as far as instant noodles are concerned. Um, you know, I wonder, they may even have this brand. If you go to the Chinese market back in the United States, they might have something like this there. Um, yeah, give them a try. Go to the Chinese market in your neighborhood when things are open back up and uh, see what they have as far as instant noodles. You might be pleasantly surprised. You know, something interesting that I just realized as I'm eating this, my hotel just happens to be sharing a building with a Chinese military office building or People's Liberation Army office building. That's what their military is called here. It's actually a branch of the Communist Party. It's uh, a really strange setup, the government here. You have the government, and then you have the party. And <laughs> The military is not necessarily part of the government. It's part of the party. Uh, Xi Jinping is the head of the party, is also the head of the military. Uh, I don't know. It's a complicated, strange, confusing thing. But yeah, my, uh, my hotel just happens to share a building with them. Interesting, huh? All right, guys, meetings are finally over. It's very late, so I'm going to end this and get some rest.
see if I can get this thing uploaded. So, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and uh, we'll we'll see you in the next one.